Hello, I'm Doug, and this is the Taste and Sensibility Channel, and we've made it all the way to wine tasting episode number 15, where we're looking at these three red wines, mostly Cabernet Sauvignon. These two are from France, from one particular appellation called St. Julian, from one particular house called Chateau Talbot. And over here we have a California Cabernet Sauvignon from, from Napa Valley. So, I'm doing this tasting because of the Wine Spectator Top 10 list from 2022. So a year ago, I went out to buy one of the wines I saw on the Top 10 lists of Wine Spectator because all the wine channels on YouTube were doing their lists. And so I went through uh, my total wine and started looking at what I could get. And I could not get the 2019 Chateau Talbot, which was on that list. But I did find a 2016, so a different vintage, same house, same care in the winemaking process. You would think. So I bought that and tasted it. And it was like, wow, that's the best thing I've ever tasted. Or best red I've ever tasted. And then a few months later, you know, I kept poking around and looking to set 2019 ever show up anywhere. And boom, my total wine had a 2019 of the Chateau Talbot. So I bought that. And then at the same time, I bought a higher end Napa. Cabernet Sauvignon. So these two actually blends with maybe 65 to 70% Cabernet Sauvignon and the rest is Merlot and Petit, Petit Verdot. So I'll point that out as we go through and taste what the blends actually are exactly. But this is all Cabernet Sauvignon. So this is just a comparison of two different vintages from the same house and then how these styles compare to the uh, Napa Valley version, which is admittedly different in uh, terms of its blending. Because there ain't no blending. So that's a lot of words to explain what's going to happen. But uh, before we get into it, let me get you to like this video, leave comments and questions down below, share it with friends, subscribe to the channel, and click on that bell to get notified. Uh, so this particular set of wines doesn't have anything to do with any of my focus countries, but it is uh, quite high end and uh, so and celebratory because I'm celebrating Christmas as you can see and these are some of the best wines I'm gonna buy because it's like 80 90 dollars a bottle and this was maybe I don't remember now 70 70 to 80 dollars and I don't drink these things all the time but this uh, prolonged tasting of one bottle out of one bottle is uh, made possible by my Coravin, which pulls a uh, wine out through a needle right, that goes right through the cork. So I bought this uh, almost 12 months ago, and then this was purchased 10 months later, and I've sampled that once. And then this one <laughs> is really good, and I've had that. I probably had three pours from that one because I was so impressed with it. So all that's made uh, possible by the Coravin. So I'll put a I'll put a card up here to last year's first episode on wines called Tools. And uh, it's very interesting how you can, when you spend more money on a bottle like, a bottle like these are, you uh, don't want to be rushed and have to drink it all in a week. You can take your time with it and really appreciate it more. And more slowly. So I'm going to start with color as I usually do. And I'll just lay them all down and look and compare. So, on this 2016 Chateau Talbot, I am seeing that it's a, oh, it's just a medium ruby, a little garnety around the edges, and it's not necessarily all that dark. It is, I can see through it to some extent, and it's not just, uh, it's not dark, dark, dark. Now, the 2019. Chateau Talbo looks very similar. It is a little yellow or garnety around the edges, a little pinkish. And again, I can see through to a great extent. Those lines are not just visible at the edges, but I can see through all the way some of the lower, uh, lesser depths, less deep lines. Now, the California Cab. 
We're looking at it. Wow, it's also lighter than I was expecting. It's not the darkest thing I've seen. And I can see through at the edges, but I don't get all the garnety stuff. I don't know if that has anything to do with the age or not. This is a 2021 vintage, uh, which is two years newer than the youngest one here. And then this is a 2016. So I don't know if the bottle aging has done anything to it at all. It's just three years difference between these two. This was last year's release and they'll be coming out with their 2020. Any time now. Maybe it's already happened. I don't know. I don't follow like high-end wines. So I've got the notes from uh, last time I tasted all of these three. And I will, let's see, wait, I do have the Wine Folly book open to the Bordeaux region where these come from. So as I said, the Appalachian is Saint Julian. And I bet I'm not even getting this on the camera. Okay, there it is. Medoc area, left bank. Okay, St. Julian, left bank of Bordeaux, and pretty far north. So it's this tiny little thing right there. For those of you who are interested in geography. So I'm going to start by nosing the first one over here. Wow, blackberry. Maybe other fruits. This is dark and rich. Hints of baking spices. I see muted and distant. Hmm, I guess I'm getting a touch of a cooked something, a charred something. I don't know if it's it's like a barbecue. I don't know if it's more of the burning medium charcoal wood or if it's more of the meat that's being cooked on it. There's a meatiness to it and very smoke. It's not intense. It's not strong, but it's a, if you smell that smoke, you go, whoa. So that's a hint that I didn't ever pick up on this before. I may have gotten something like that over here on this tasting much more recently. Okay. Different nose. Let's go. 2019 Chateau Talbot. Wow. Much the same. And the differences are subtle. And I don't know if I could even describe them. And blackberry. Uh, other generalized fruits, but I can't really say naming a bunch of red fruits it wouldn't sound right. This nose is different. Black plum, black cherries, blackberries, maybe black raspberry, dark things. And I don't eat a bunch of things that dark for the most part. I do enjoy blackberries quite a bit, so I'm familiar with that one. Smell and taste. So the other things in there are similar. Back it up, reinforce it. And some baking spice hints or some, some things telling me it's seam wood for sure. Yeah, that is lovely. I don't really get anything tart. I don't get a tartness to it. I don't pick up the acidity on my nose. So that's that. And then California. There's this Camus from Napa. Ew. Okay. It's black fruits, but it's a little fresher and more, a little more vibrant. And there might be other fruits. There might be things like a strawberry, a dark cherry. Hmm, something, something lighter too. A mango. 
something peachy, something lighter, and it gives me the impression it's gonna be sweeter than these things, just from the nose. Oh, that's a nice ring. Uh, to go along with the wind chimes in my living room. So now I'm going to start in with this uh, 2016 Chateau Talbot on the palette. And I've got notes here which tell me this is a blend that is 65% Cabernet Sauvignon, 31% Merlot, and only 3% Petit Verdot, which I don't know anything about. I've had Merlots a lot, but I don't know about Petit Verdot. But let's taste. Wow, blackberries. It's dry. It's not sweet at all, but it's fruity. And there's a rounded, aged uh, roundness to it. Every, all the, <laughs> there are no sharp edges. The tannins and acidity, if any, don't really hit me right away, but they it grows in. Tannins are soft, rounded, coming gradually from the mid palate on. And definitely not sweet, but definitely fruity. And, uh, Good amount of tannins. I notice the tannins much more than any acidity, which is probably in there if you're going to be able to age this for decades, which you probably can. So very nice, very pleasant, very typical red wine notes, but more intense, more fruity, more more stuff going on that grab your attention. If you just you know went to a normal restaurant and had this poured for you. This is an average bottle, you would, it would get your attention. So this was my consolation prize when I couldn't buy the one that was actually on the list. I was looking for 2019. And I don't know if it just hadn't hit my area yet or if the first round was sold out because of the list. But uh, I was quite happy when I tasted this. I said, wow, if that's something that doesn't win uh, those prizes, uh, that's pretty good. And maybe it got better in the bottle. I have no idea how long it takes for these wines to improve or change much uh, the, through bottle aging. So I really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I've got two more pours, I would say, left on this bottle. And I will enjoy those too. And uh, now I'm going to move on to the 2019, which I've only tasted once, but it was different. I could tell, I, I wrote down things. Well, let me see, okay. This is the 2016 that I just tasted. <laughs> it tasted almost a year ago. And I said, blackberries, blueberries, spicy, earthy, smooth and integrated, 13.5 uh, ABV, which I haven't said yet. Well, I put the color somewhere between purple and ruby and uh, just a medium dark. And then something on the bottle said Grand Cru Classe. Oh yeah, there it is on both of those bottles. And I don't know what that means, but I think it's pretty fancy. I think it's really up there. Same family for sure. Wow, mostly the same flavors. Maybe a touch less intense. Certain things, when I tasted this the first time, distressed me a little bit that I didn't think it was as good as this one, but I'm probably not much of a taster. I'm getting blackberries. Uh, I'm detecting less, less tannins right now, so between these two. I'm getting less tans over here than I got before. Uh, don't really pick up acidity as a separate characteristic, but I know it's got to be in there. So it's just well integrated. The flavors are about the same. Dark fruits. Uh, 
with no real sweetness behind them. Blackberry for sure. Uh, black plums, maybe a dark cherry. There's a smear of fruits that are non-distinct and blackberry is the only thing I can uh, pull out of it. And on the second sip, I can tell there's a spiciness on the finish. The tannins are growing in slowly. They're less, less here than over here. Uh, just doing a quick estimation, but there's a spiciness growing in. Maybe if I was more careful, I could have picked it up over here, but this is, uh, if you just let it go, it grows in slowly. It's not real intense. It's just something you notice might be coming from a French oak. So I'm not disappointed at all. I am no longer distressed and I have most of this bottle left. I took out two. I probably get uh, six, six or seven pours because I usually, when I'm just drinking them, I don't pour very much. So I pour tasting amounts most of the time and uh, don't really go after them with meals and things. I'm still in the, uh, the curiosity phase, just figuring out what the range of flavors is. <laughs> and this is a really nice range of flavors. This is up there with like, you know, the top two or three wines I've ever tasted. Uh, red wines that I've ever tasted, because I've had quite a few spectacular whites. So yes, I'm liking this a lot. And I think I see why it gets noticed. And what the uh, nice features are. I just don't really have a good idea of how rare that is. So both these are the, in the 80 to $90 range. I was looking up the uh, blend components just so, so I could uh, talk about it intelligently here because they don't tell you on the bottle. They just say the appellation. And you're supposed to know. That'll be Cabernet Sauvignon plus some other things that they blend in. And the blending partners are something you have to look up on the website for the most part because they don't really say on the bottle what it is. In the 2019, which I did very quickly, uh, Chateau Talbo. I just had this uh, less than two months ago. I said deep color. I said ruby, intense blackberry, ash, baking spices, meat, and barbecue. Whoa. Okay, so I was surprised when I got a little hint of that over here. And that was a nose thing, I think. Now, taste-wise, oh man, I put the body up higher than I did when I rated this. 10 months before. Put the tannins in the middle. Ooh, acidity. I get <laughs> at medium and above. Tart fruit, raspberry, strawberry. I don't even know what that means. Blackberry. Lots more non fruit items. So, okay. The smokiness, ash, smoky things. I think is what I'm talking about there. And I don't remember getting. Strawberry, raspberry. There's a touch more tartness on this particular sip, but I wouldn't uh, put it in with strawberry or raspberry. So when I said I picked up more acidity, okay, now I'm starting to get it, but it doesn't strike me as red fruits really at all. So you will have different experiences at different times. And of course, these could have changed in the bottle. The little hole that goes through the cork might let in a bit more oxygen. And the cork's probably breathing a little bit all the time. Cork might be breathing a little. I'll just take it all out. And if you don't flush out that needle, give it a jet of argon right before you plunge it through the cork, maybe you're introducing a little oxygen that will tear up stuff and shear off the top notes and change the wine from what you had before. So that's always a possibility when you're doing these Corvin uh, tastings. So, boy, I love these two. They're real interesting. They uh, are pretty much the way I remember them. Although, yeah. They are about what I remember and wrote down at the time. 
just slightly different interpretations at different times. Now, if I can wash off, <laughs> wash all that fuzz off my tongue from all those tannins, I'll move into California. So, 2021, Camus Vineyards, Napa Valley, and they have a picture of the family that established it and looking like, you know, the, the Leave it to Beaver family in the 50s. And a black and white photo on the back here. So, oh wow, tells me it's gonna be sweeter. That is a sweeter nose somehow. It's just fruitier. It's the fruit jumps up out of your, out of the glass and into your nose. Like I'm here, and I mean just expecting more intensity in every way. But we'll see. Oh wow, yes, it is in your face. There is a certain sweetness to it, but I'm not sure I would call it sweet or move it even up to off dry. There's good tannins growing in. The fruit mixture is very different. Blackberry to the fore, but there's unidentified red fruits or other fruits moving in. And that's an interesting mix. Black raspberry and the tannins keep growing and growing. They're taking over. So I'm, I'm sure it's some higher ABV. 14.6 uh, it says here on the back. So that's really tasty, interesting, slightly different profile. Uh, 60, 70, 75% of it's the same as over here, but it's fruits are more intense. The black fruit is more intense. Uh, perceived sweetness. I picked it up on the nose and thought, oh, it's going to be sweeter. And there is a sense in which it tastes sweeter, but it's still a dry wine that's drying on your palate. And I don't really get acidity as a separate characteristic. And the fruits don't seem as tart as they do over here. Although I didn't claim any red, <laughs> red fruit character over there, did I? So, what? Hard to describe, hard to describe when you're tasting things that you don't really have words for. Mmm. Okay, this fruit forwardness, it's just a fresher kind of fruit. It is one of the main characteristics of California wines. So in Napa, cabs are competing with uh, some of the better Bordeaux cabs. This is the thing that really stands out and makes them different. Intensity and freshness of the fruit. This is bold and in your face. And can't say there's a spiciness growing in. They're probably using American oak and not French oak. And <laughs> they didn't have it in there very long if this is a 2021 vintage that I bought uh, a few months back. So I'm enjoying all these. If I was going to go back and buy more, I would probably buy this one over and over again and just peek in on these every couple of years or, you know, read the, read the reviews first. But uh, this one, I think they've made a new uh, customer. So really enjoying all of these, but this one, uh, I would say is my favorite here. So, very nice. These two are just so close together, even they're, though they're three years apart and I don't know anything about the vintages, what people uh, consider the good one, average one, something superior. No idea, but I like both of these and I mm, probably have a preference for this one. Even though this is the uh, one that uh, started the, uh, this whole <laughs> journey through these uh, higher-end cabs. So, yes, I like them.